What's up and good morning. Welcome back to another video guys. Looks like we're back to uh, to the old 7-3 life here. You guys know the BBB build, the Denali of mine is over at the shop getting the whole rear end done. But you may notice this big old piece of something in the back over here. If you guys recall back in one of my older videos, my, uh, my buddy Josh, my detailer, my gym partner, yada yada yada, was bringing his tailgating stripper pole setup over to my house one day, or one night after a concert, and well, they failed to realize that in the gated-ish community that I live in, there is an overhang. They clipped the overhang, the pole got sheared off of the stage, and well, we gotta get that fixed. But the reason he was bringing it over to my house is we're gonna kinda really ramp this thing up and make it a lot cooler for this uh, concert season, I guess you would say. Now, originally the plan was just to really pimp this thing out, because it was fully functional, but being that now it's broken, we're gonna end up fixing it first, we're also gonna make some alterations to it, and then we're gonna work on getting the thing pimped out. So first things first, we need to head over to the PO box because we've got, uh, we've got some lights that should be in for this thing, we'll talk about those more in a second. Then we're gonna run over to the metal supply house to get some more metal for this thing, and then we're gonna head to the shop and really start to put work in on it. Well, you win some, you lose some, just went to the P.O. box. Clearly, uh, the lights haven't made it down yet, but C4 Off-Road, the guys that uh, hooked me up with the rock lights on my last truck, actually hooked us up with lights for the stripper stage, and of course, obviously, they're gonna be taking care of the new truck, but clearly, the lights haven't made it yet. That's not a big deal, because we do really have a, a decent amount of work in getting this thing put back together, but there was one thing in the P.O. box. Got a letter. Let's see what this letter says. It says, good evening, sir. This was my unit I was with from my time in the United States Army. It belongs to the 2nd Infantry Division, which is the only division to feature Katusas, Korean soldiers in parentheses, as equal soldiers in ranks. Currently, 2IO's primary mission is defending the South Korean people and the demilitarized zone. That's pretty sweet, especially with all the Korean stuff going on now. Thank you for your continuous support of the military and our police officers who risk their lives every day for you and me. You have no idea how refreshing it is to still have the support when us soldiers come home. You're a true patriot and someone I look up to. I hope you enjoy the patch as much as I did. Thank you again. And this is from Austin. So this is a, this is a pretty, pretty badass looking patch. Thank you, Austin. I really do appreciate anybody that has sent me a patch. And I really do appreciate the stories that come with these patches because you know, to, to some people, they see a patch and, and it's just a patch. But to me, these things symbolize something. Patches were derived because they were there to symbolize something. So being able to read this letter and see this story and, and now have a patch to go along with it. Austin, I really do appreciate it. Thank you, brother. And thank you to all of our men and women out there fighting for our freedoms. Thank you to our police officers, our first responders. As you guys know, myself as well as this channel, we are all about supporting our military, our police officers, our first responders, fire department, EMTs. And I will always continue to have your guys' back, so thank you for fighting for our freedom. And if any of you guys would like to send a patch to add to my collection, a letter, uh, really anything, a letter saying you suck, a letter saying we love you, whatever it is, uh, my email's down below in the info. Shoot me an email and I'll send you guys a P.O. box. So we have arrived over here, industrial metal supply. Josh is apparently hanging out in his air conditioning in his Denali. You know, so I introduced you this morning as like my homie Josh, detailer slash gym partner. You went a little farther, but well, well, the gym partner thing. I'm not. I mean, I'm not sure exactly what happened this morning, but now you see. So normally we shoot for the gym about about six o'clock ish in the morning. Sometimes a little bit later. You know, it's the weekend, so I'm like, all right, you know, we'll, we'll bump it up to seven o'clock. That way, you know, a little extra hour of sleep's always nice. You know, I get to the gym about pretty close to seven. Sitting there, I'll give Josh a minute, you know, he's got a longer drive than I do. 7.15, okay, well, this is getting a little bit weird. All right, 7.20, all right, I can't wait anymore. I should go get my, my workout started. You know, I text the guy, hey buddy, you know, it was more like one tequila, two tequila, three tequila, you're late for the gym, because, um, you know, if I got any idea of what this guy's doing. What are you doing, dude? Those are all my alarms I forgot to set. Oh, well, yeah, the alarms do you no good when you forget to set them. So woke we'll, up and they all look like that. Yeah, buddy. Well, you know, uh, not it was that, a great, not, it was a great workout excuse. without you. I mean. But uh, what, what, what's going on? Oh, you know. I had trouble setting the alarms and uh, didn't make it to the gym quite, uh, quite on time today, if at all. Then, then you wouldn't see any different reasons. Allegedly. Now, I've always wanted to buy one of these. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but they're just really cool looking. 
Oh, you're getting your workout in now? Now that you're late? Is that actual size? Continuing workout? Yeah, that's all we No one didn't want to work out earlier. You knew we were coming here. Day. Looking great, buddy. Safety first. Let's go out into the, uh, <laughs> the yard out here. Hurry, hurry up, buddy. They're closing on us. They're yelling at us. It's getting crazy in here. Let's go. All right. Oh, weird. What? You're not, you're not going to put it in your truck? Works like you, you've got a truck, bro. You've got a truck. You, you don't use your truck for work? Yeah, just slide it next to that $250 brass sleeve right there to scratch it up. I can polish that thing. Yeah, you polish some brass all right, huh? Oh, hey, Josh! Hey, bud. I didn't know you'd be here, buddy. Oh, yeah, just got here. Come on. First things first, buddy. Let's give him a little walkthrough of what we're doing today. We're gonna be rebuilding the stripper pole. Well, why are we rebuilding it? That's that's an important factor. Because it is broken. Well, all right, we get it's broken. So, obviously, first things first, the brass pole that was here has sheared off. So we need to re-weld that on, which means that this whole deck needs to come off because apparently the deck was put on after the pole was installed. Then, as you guys can see, we got risers down here, right? And what this does is, you know, that's that part of it goes in the trailer hitch. I mean, I showed you guys pictures earlier. That part goes in the trailer hitch. Then he's got these risers. And the reason he has these risers and they're, why they're so big is that when his pole is on there and he's traveling, he uses it to put an American flag on. Now, he has a large American flag because, as you know, like you cannot get a big enough American flag. So he is not content running with a 3x5 American flag. What size flag do you have? 6x10. He's got a 6x10 American flag that he uses while driving. But the issue being, as at its current height, the flag will touch the ground if he stops or whatever. And that's that is, a couple inches. I mean, we're close. That is not acceptable. Close, don't cut it. So we're going to be raising these risers. That way, when it is on the truck with the pole and the flag, it is going to sit high enough off the ground that there is no longer the risk of the flag touching the ground, which essentially almost means a complete rebuild of the stripper pole setup. Complete rebuild. Complete rebuild. And then once the lights show up, and I actually just spoke to the owner of C4 Off-Road, he did send the lights. They did make it here, but apparently in the, uh, the shipping label, my P.O. box number was not on there, and everybody at the counter apparently claims they don't know where it's at. So it's probably gonna get returned to him and then it's gonna have to make its way back to us. Story of our lives, but we're gonna get it done. So that's not a big deal. We've got giant plans for this thing. Like if you think lights are like what we're calling this giant cool pimping this thing out, nah, that's just the start. I don't even wanna give away what we're gonna be doing to this thing, but we, want to, uh, we want this thing to be the showstopper at all the concerts, right buddy? Tell you it's to come. All right, so we've got everything ground down to clean up. How'd it go, buddy? Better than I expected. There you go. So Dave's kind of gone MIA with the van and the welder, uh, which obviously poses a problem in putting this thing back together. But as you guys all know, our good man, Eduardo, AKA Eddie, AKA Eddie's life on YouTube is all about welding now. You know, he's got a couple welders set up in his garage. He's got a bunch of steel. He's got all that. So I think we ought to give that guy a call and see if maybe we can, uh, sneak this whole piece of or pile of parts over to Eddie's house and maybe uh, assemble things there. All right, we're pulling up at Eddie's house. I don't know where Eddie is. Eddie's big ass boat's out front though, that's for sure. I'm gonna park over here in the gravel considering, uh, well, the truck leaks a little bit of oil. Looks like uh, Michael's pulling up in the brand new dually. Mm -hmm. But of course, you know, when we're showing up at Eddie's house, you gotta bring churros, you know, you gotta keep the man happy. I got you something. What's up, buddy? What'd you get me? A few cases of water. You got, you got me a few cases of water. So if you guys don't know, this is Michael's cousin, or this is Eddie's cousin, Michael. He uh, has this sweet 2018 L5P dually right here. But he's also, just, just 
started a water company. He started a water company. Uh, uh, yeah. Or we'll I'll trade you. Put it on the do. toolbox right now. So he's, he's giving me some, some, hooking me up with some water here. Come on, bro. What, what's your water company? It's called Alkalate. What's the spiel? Uh, it's alkaline water sourced from San Diego. All right. <laughs> Hell of a salesman, buddy. Eduardo! I don't see him. Looks like he's got his welding stuff set up and ready for us. Oh, that's pretty sweet. So what's up, buddy? How's what's going, going on? on? I don't think you've been on the channel in a long time. Yeah, well, you know, you've been, I guess, working too much. Well, yeah, we only call you when we need you. I figured, yeah, you guys need some. Why are you here anyways? Well, you know, we got a, we got a, I heard you got this new Miller Moldematic 215. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, that's right. That you really want to show me that you're, you're able to use. So I figured, all right, I've got the project for you. My man Josh over here needs a little help putting the stripper stage back together that we all cut apart about 30 minutes ago. Well, I heard that it was running good, but a large, uh, Okay, put this a large uh, female. I want to say female. I want to say a large object was on there and uh, had a little uh, issue. That was the that was the first problem we had. Yeah, it, wow. uh, it had gotten bent. And the second issue we had is driving through someone's gated community over here. Uh, Apparently, he doesn't like to get out and look at the overhang, and they just want to plow through it and knock off the pole. Oh, we got big man Michael over here. He is on it. Look at. He'll handle the big shit. Well, he's grabbing the light stuff right now. That pole weighs like 10 times more than that piece you got right Really? That, that triple pole weighs more than this? Dude, that pole's schedule 80. Look how thick this shit is. Slide it down, slide it down. That hey, is, that, that that is some look, thick That looks like stuff. IMS right there. If there's gloves on Eddie, he's about to do some work. We're good. <laughs> so basically, when the stripper pole's on the truck, it rakes back at an angle, obviously, because of the weight, and it's only going into the truck that far. So we want to make the back riser a little bit higher than the front riser to kind of offset for that rake and it will actually make the platform level when it's mounted on the truck. So, so being that we're in Eddie's garage, we can actually bring the truck in, put it on a flat surface and install it, whereas at the other shop we could not. So it's actually going to end up being better, assuming Eddie can really weld. You must not be watching the YouTube videos. <laughs> Alright, alright. Stay right here. Alright, I'm going to play project manager everybody. Hey, keep up the good work, buddy. We want to make sure that pressure washer does not fall over. You're holding it up. Appreciate it. <laughs> it's holding me up. So. Oh, all right, fair. All right, so here's what we're going to do. we got to cut this two-inch stock. Right, we're making two legs. Boom, boom. Back one's going to be a little bit higher than the front one. What that's going to be, we don't know. We need to level and clamp. We'll get it figured out. Then, we got to weld that platform right there on top of those two legs. Got it? Awesome. Then, we got to cut off that broken end of the pole over there and we're going to reattach it to right there where the old weld was on the platform you see it right there in the middle we got to re-weld it to that then we got to slide the platform back over top of everything and tack weld that thing in place all the way around easy peasy 30 minute job let's do it boys ready Everybody. hands in boys hands in one two three weld can you say it all in spanish now is it weld see Okay, primero, <laughs> do you want to sell water or not? Show everybody your beautiful thong tan line. It's not a thong, it's a fishing belt. It, let, wait, let's see it. Uh, let's see it. Dude, that is a thong. I wish what I brought, the? I wish I brought my fishing belt so I would have shown you exactly how it went. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, hey, we're going to go do some manly stuff over here. <laughs> Well, I gotta know, like, I've always thought they gotta be uncomfortable, right? It was a fishing belt. Okay, your fishing belt. Oh, All right, so now we've got it back at the, pretty sure the original hive that's old uh, Josh, we should cut them at. Right, buddy? Something like that. Something like that. Let's, uh, let's see, let's make sure you're happy with the height this time. Let's put it on the
So we've been dealing back and forth. We're trying to get Eddie's kid to calm down. She's kind of like interrupting Eddie's welding. Keeps trying to pull Eddie away. So Michael decided to jump in the razor. I don't think he really fit the 170, buddy. Yeah. But uh, it's, uh, it's pretty close. <laughs> Great fit, buddy. Great fit. So <laughs> what? You want him out? All right, so now that we got the main pole welded on, we got to slide over the two sleeves that we found out. There's actually two sleeves over there. But we will not fit out of Eddie's garage because obviously it is too tall by eight inches. We almost made it. So we have to pull this thing off the truck. I'm always too big by eight inches. Is that what happens? Yeah. And then we got to carry it outside, re-put it on the truck, and slide the sleeve over as well as the platform over. So it's going uh, to be fun. But we got Big Mike over here. He's going to show us how strong he is right now and probably do it by himself. Right, buddy? Really? I feel like sure. I want to cut a foot off. Oh. 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 Okay, so uh, it looks like Ryan just took over and just told me to move pretty much and you know he's done with me, he doesn't want to put up with me no more. So uh Well here you go guys, if this thing falls apart, you'll know why. Alright, well we ended up getting everything back together the way it was, if not better, because it is now taller, other than the brass ball that goes on the end, but Josh is going to uh, have to order another one. They didn't have one at the industrial metal supply, but that's alright. So now we're going to carry this behemoth, put it on the truck, and see how she sits and see how she rides. Alright buddy, well, what do you think? How does it feel to actually have this thing back together almost 100%? Feels great. Feels like I don't want to fuck it up. <laughs> now, as you guys know, I told you this is going to be the ultimate tailgating stripper pole setup. This is nowhere near done. I had much bigger plans to do today. Obviously, the lights didn't show up uh, by no fault of anybody's. Uh, the postal service got a little bit weird. We figured, figured that out today. But this thing's going to be downlit. It's going to be uplit. And I'm not going to make any promises, but we're working on, I don't know if you've ever been to a nightclub, not a nightclub guy myself, but in the nightclubs, they got those giant CO2 cannon foggers. Now you're kind of seeing where we're going with this thing. So with that, we're going to wrap up this video. I want to thank all of you guys for watching my video. So if you're not subscribed, please click the subscribe button now that we can follow along with obviously the stripper pole build, my BBB build, and all the other stuff that we're going to be getting into. Please give this video a like, aka a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it with your friends. And I don't know if you've ever said roll the outro in a video. You probably have, but go ahead. Take it away, buddy. Roll the outro. Damn. Uh.